I forgot how pretty this thing is. The amount of detail is just brilliant. Look at all the terminal checks! Must be nice having inspection lights underneath the running boards. And there's, oh, it's got holes drilled in the running boards too. Check that out. The texturing. Yeah, this thing is, <laughs> this thing is properly awesome. Now these default passenger cars, not so much, but we'll focus up here. <laughs> What's up guys, this is Heiss. And today we're playing Train Simulator 2022 and we're gonna run the living legend. We're gonna run the 844, the Union Pacific class FEF3 built by Smokebox. And this is another beautiful model. I believe this is the first one that Heat Smokebox made. I can't remember. I've had it for a long time, but I haven't played with it in quite a minute. But it is just stunning. I mean, just look at it. And the simulation's pretty good, too. So we're going to see if I can burn oil. But they've apparently told us that we can go. Road Foreman. Great memorable. Yeah, so this is a scenario, I suppose. So let's see if we can mess this up. All right, so look, other choo-choos. Uh, <laughs> very similar in the cab to the big boy, although the cameras are a little bit closer, and I, I think the seats may be a touch closer, but this is obviously the one uh, big difference. We got an oil burner here instead of a coal burner. So we've got a uh, big firing valve to deal with. Your controls on the engineer side are pretty much the same as we talked about on the big boy except we've also got the addition of the MU stand for a diesel, should we have one, but we do not. So we're, we're gonna be unencumbered by that. We'll ignore that today. Got a cute little bucket for our sand. I don't think you can actually sand the, uh, the flues or not, uh, but we'll see. But anyways, all of this is pretty much as described in the big boy. The addition of a second headlight switch for the Mars light, which is fun. Anyway. Let's go over to the interesting side of things here. And, a, and a, a fun different cab view out the front with the uh, the elephant ears on the side. You, you get that big profile there. It's neat to see. So on this side, we've got a big firing valve instead of the trio or, you know, triangle of valves that we had before. So let's turn off the fireman. So he's turned off and we'll keep an eye on things with the F5 menu. But the firing valve basically runs the fire. How much oil flow do we want? We want less flow, we go there. We want lots of flow, we go there. And I believe it even dynamically changes the smoke. So we got a little haze right now. And if we crank this on, probably don't have enough e exhaust. Let's crank it on with some blower. There you go. We can roll black out, which we don't want to do. So we'll let that clear up. We've got to clear the fire mass out though. So I've got the firing valve all the way off. And the, uh, the fire mass is hardly changing because the blower really doesn't exhaust it that much. So you can see that we've, we've run a nice big black amount of smoke here, even though the firing valve is still off. So the big principle of oil firing is that you really got to change things very quickly with what the engineer does. So it's a little bit more challenging to run even uh, than, the, uh, <clears throat> than the big boy was with the coal burning. So let's, let's get underway and see what we can do here. All right, we'll get a little HUD down there just to see what we got. We got a 35. Kick the brake off. Cylinder cocks are open. We are in release on the automatic. Start coming out on the throttle here. And it's just going to walk away with it. Big drivers, man. Oh, and you can see the little firebox flicker through the, uh, through the fire. That's cool. That's something that oil burners do, especially with the way that they're set up. But now you can see that the fire mass is decreasing a lot quicker. It's actually falling through the floor there. So we're going to come out on the firing valve here. And we're going to close the cylinder cocks. We've got enough rotations through. We're going to bring the bar back a little bit. And we're going to start uh, bringing the throttle to the ceiling here. And we'll close the blower now that we've got our own draft here. And the auto fireman 
You can turn the auto fireman off, but he, he prevents your fire from going out, which is a nice feature. Um, so <laughs> he said that I needed to grab a ton more there, and, and uh, I hadn't had it yet, so. Let's get that throttle pretty far open now. Bring the bar back up. All right, throttle's on the ceiling. We'll get a little bit more back pressure going on. As we talked in the episode with the big boy, the back pressure is the measure of the back side of the stroke and how much uh, pressure you have there. Ooh, bye other train. <laughs> 80 inch drive wheels mean for slow chuffs. All right, hang on. Can we can we knock this back a little bit? And we'll bring the atomizer up a little bit. Now that we've got a little bit of a, a draft going on, we're just not using any steam yet. I guess I could just put dump the bar in the corner and just get after it. There we go. All right, now we'll bring the oil back up. And we need to get our damper opening too. How does that want to open like that? There we go. We want more air to come in. And we want more fire now. There we go. <laughs> so I was having to make a bunch of quick changes there. Now that we're actually really starting to move here. And we're already at the speed limit. Hang on. We got too, too many things to do here. All right, so we shut the throttle so we can bring the, the oil back. What the heck is that? I was conditioned from my um, from my playthrough on the British line that if you hear weird sounds in the cab, you just start smacking the Q button in the event that there's an alerter or something that needs to go. Okay, we got a flashing flashing green over red. I don't know Union Pacific signals. It's telling us things, but we can go. All right. Anyways, we're going to come back out on the throttle here, and maybe I'll eventually get to explain what I'm doing with the oil if I can get things up to speed here. We got a 40. Coming up. All right. We're maintaining the fire mass we have pretty decently now, but we're now using a bit more steam than we're making. And we don't have too much atomization going on because we don't have too much exhaust pressure. But I would like a little bit more fire. We've got just a t uh, bit of a gray haze right now, which is good on the smoke. Anyway, so the, the whole principle with oil burning is that you have the flow with the firing valve, and then you're able to atomize the oil with the atomizer, which is basically a steam mister that mists and forces the oil back. You can see the, uh, the fire through the... Let's see if I can get the camera view over there. You can see the fire through the little porthole here. The sand hole, I guess they call it. But, um, yeah, as, um, as you start to increase the draft, you basically start drawing a vacuum through the fire more and more. And so you need to have more atomizer to counteract that so that you ensure that the fire comes all the way back because the burner's at the, at the front of the firebox up here. So you need to make sure that you get the fire to roll back, heat everything up, and then the heat runs out through the flues. So as you start exhausting harder, you need more atomization to do that and more fuel flow to support that. We're actually kind of coming up now a little bit, so I'll dial back my flow there. And we'll bring the bar back to get a little bit more steam going because we got plenty of speed. we got a 70 coming up, though, so we're going to want to haul butts on that. And you'll note that the... Uh, <laughs> We're, we're a little bit smaller than the big boys, so we don't have six million thousand water glasses. We just have three. But we do want to get some water going. So if I recall in this one, it's actually just a... Uh, it's just a dial here. Crank it on all the way, and, and then it'll just do the thing. We'll double check that, because that burned me previously, so... Alright, we're making a little bit more steam, but now we got a 70, so we want to get up to speed here. Let's get scooting. That's what these big drivers are for. I mean, each one of these drivers is 80 inches tall, six foot eight. That's 
large and in charge, so we want to put those to good work here. Throttles on the ceiling. We're making steam. But we're not making quite as much steam as we want for the acceleration we want. But we've also got kind of a gray, grayish, dark, gray haze. So, I mean, we've even got perhaps a little bit more fire than we need for, for the draft. So, I'm going to bring the... Uh, Bring the bar and the firing valve back a little bit. And see if we can't dial the atomizer down a little bit. Uh, actually, you can see in the uh, in the menu right when it you get to the point it is, it's kind of binary. Bang, 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 bang. So we'll just leave it there. Uh, a tip that I've always heard from oil burning firemen, not that I've actually uh, fired terribly much oil. I've only done it a couple times and I haven't really gotten to fire anything of tonnage over the road or at good speed. But I've always heard that you want to run as low of an atomizer as you can. Excess atomizer should be avoided. Just enough to keep the heat going on throughout. So we'll, we'll try and keep that as low as we can. And it appears that our water is in fact rising with the, the feed water pump cranked up all the way right there. That's probably what goofed me up in the big first Big Boy episode is I didn't realize that you had to do that. And now we've we've just kind of got things rolling. We we are a little heavy on the smoke still a little bit. We could clean this up. See if we can't get that. I'm not sure if that affects our steam. We see we generate more steam if we if we take the uh, <laughs> the firing valve and and bring it all the way over. But that's not what we want to do. I guess we could just just go nuts with it, and then uh, just to bring up the Johnson bar to match and just use the use what we got. It'll increase the draft, which will then decrease the smoke, theoretically, so. But we might actually want to increase the atomizer for that, then. So we're sticking about 290, 295 on the gauge. We, so I want to get up to that 70 if I can't. I guess we're out we're coming up to a 60, so we'll have to deal with just a 60 mile an hour speed limit. But what a good looking locomotive. What a brilliant model, and the, and the sim is just, I mean, it's just fantastic. Although, yeah, we are, we are still a little hazy, a little too hot. Oh, look at that. Another choo-choo. <laughs> it's just fun watching those big drivers go around. I love it. How are, how are we doing? Well, I guess the safety's lifting, so we must be doing something right. Oh, we've got a full fire mass of 150 pounds. That's the, the maximum amount. It's kind of weird to use fire mass as a term with an oil burner because your, your fire is just atomized oil in there. So the fact that there's 150 pounds of oil just doing stuff in there is kind of weird to think about. But anyway. My steam generation just got all wonky for a second there. We lost like 15 PSI, just the drop of a hat. Oh, look at that. That's so cute. You can see the mechanical. Oh, we just blew through that grade crossing without giving a warning. Oops. We're busy looking at our oil doing things. So this is a mechanical lubricator distributing oil to all of the various components here. Typically through terminal checks like this, if it is for the steam pressure here, you don't have the steam pressure back feed and toss your oil out. So these are a special check valve that allows oil to be cranked in, but not let steam out. And as the... Uh, as it cranks, it's actuated by the valve gear off of the combination lever in this case, which is cool. Getting a good 50 going, but we're hitting a grade. I'm not sure if we're going to get to that uh, that mythical 70 mile an hour that we want to get to. But we are, we're working it pretty hard here. We got max fire going. <laughs> it's fun to see the, the white walls disappear as the, the counterweights come around. Because the drivers are counterweighted. 
And goodness, the, the texture work on the on the shiny cylinder heads is great. What a pretty thing. We wanna see these drivers spin. Come on. Well not literally spin, but not a not a wheel slip. Doing a good fifty though. But we we went that fast in a big boy. I want we wanna get some speed going here. <laughs> yeah, and the the default coaches from God knows when, 2009. Don't look that brilliant, but... Oh yeah, we're losing speed. I could percent and a half. Yeah, we're, we're probably not going to make it up to that mythical 70 mile an hour when we're trying to conquer Sherman Hill. This is the Sherman Hill route, by the way. So, and we're on the steep side of things, apparently. We got a lot of back pressure, lordy. Oh, and we've got cab signal, look at that. That's neat. Got a green indication for our next dealio. That's quite cool. There's so much detail that goes into these models. It's, it's really nice, it's really impressive. Oh good, we have uh, the same boiler card performance report that we have in the big boy. I, I didn't know about this last time I played with this. It'll probably tell me that I'm firing like crap. Steam usage just spiked for some reason there. Oh, the fireman's got cab signal indication too. That's interesting. Okay. So let's see, what, what does the report tell us? Is it different, either one? 17 minutes. 55% black smoke, small amount of white smoke, small amount of soot. I guess 35% soot. Mm. No wheel slip, no wheel skid, skid, no blockages, no condensation in cylinders, you're gosh darn right. 0.2 mile, over a thousand tons. How cool is that? I love those little stats, it's very neat. Well, so... I guess the, the dream would be then to get it to run clean stack. If it's gonna tell me that I'm I'm getting nothing but uh, black smoke. But at the same time I'm trying to make speed and build steam. So I'm not sure how we do that with uh, with letting the fire die back. So I guess we'll, 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 we'll decrease our fire mass rapidly by shutting the valve off. Oh, and the, the choo-choo did not appreciate that. Had to dial the bar back pretty far for that to catch. But we'll let it come back till we get some amount of uh, cleaner burning here. I want to see a clear stack. That's the whole point of this thing. Alright. Because it seems that the, uh, the steam generation rate is actually tied to the position of the... <laughs> Uh, the firing quadrant rather than the actual fire mass because the fire mass is a little bit slower to react. Went through a crossover there. That was cool. A little siding there. 1.2% grade. We are losing speed in our, our quest for better firing. We'll have to have somebody who's actually fired oil come tell me how to do this. Because <laughs> the, the answer seems to be just st stick more oil in. Just make it burn. Do the thing. And put the atomizer right where the steam generation just jumps. Well, see, now we're kind of running a little bit cleaner. Despite having more fire mass, I guess we've got enough, uh, 
enough exhaust that it works. Look at these cute little grade crossing flashers. There's no bungalow for this crossing. The gates work by magic. And they've still got mechanical bells. That's fun. <laughs> Don't mind me. Signal engineer nerd over here. And then you put the bar in the corner and then the, the pressure just disappears. All right, well, we've got the oil fairly far up. Got a full fire mass again. We've got the feed water pump just absolutely cranking. And uh, it's just kind of happy. We're just kind of just putting along. And it's now Scenery Simulator 2022. And honestly, the, the best scenery on the map is the, is the 844 itself. Look at how fun that is. The, the sim of the... Uh, the, <laughs> the fire doing this thing through the damper is... That's, that's cool. How much is changing the damper? Oh yeah, you can see what it affects. You want to have it nice and open right now. We're generating 100, 115,000 steams. I think that's actually the maximum generation this thing can make, if I recall. So yeah, we are... Uh, <laughs> this is as fast as we're going to go with this train on this grade, apparently. Well, who said we needed to run the train right? Right... I want to go fast. Is there, is there anyone out there who wants to go fast? Operational error. We're losing points. And it didn't even dump my uh, my brake pipe as I do this. Okay, bye now. <laughs> it's now a business train. We, oh, oh. Strange things are happening back there. What are these cars doing? Um... Strange things are afoot. Alright, you ought to have a little bit of an easier time now, Choo Choo. Come on. Oh yeah, you can watch the boiler pressure drain very quickly that way. Oh, we killed the fire in about two oomps of a second there. Did we put out the fire out put out the fire by going in the corner? Oh, I think we put out the fire, put out the fire. I'm not sure how I relight. In the real life, you can actually, er, in real life, you can actually relight off the brick. But, hmm. We are, we are no longer having the fuegos. And that might be game over, I can't remember. Let's uh, consult the, uh, the manual here. Is there anything that I can do? Probably not. How are we still generating steam? Well, I guess there's still some amount of fire mass. We run the the burner blowback, clean it off. No, because it also has simulated events, much like the uh, much like the big boy does, where there's uh, blockages and things that happen. All right, I'm gonna consult the manual. All right, I've consulted the manual, which means that we may be able to save this before we run out of boiler pressure. All right, so yep, we turn the the burner blowback on with the firing valve open all the way, and then you blow the obstruction off of the oil burner. You basically back pressure it, and then the the fire reappears, and then hooray! But yeah, we uh we dumped the bar in the corner. Kind of liberally earlier, and then uh, that caused problems for steam locomotive operation. So now our business train is going to be running slow because it's now running at pressure that 346 runs at. Well, a little bit more. Whatever. We'll we'll start to get a little bit more pressure built up here as quick as we can. I don't think the blower does much right now. Let's get that damper doing stuff.
just, you know, do awful things to the boiler. We went from 300 to about 160 in about 30 seconds or so, and then now we've slingshot back up to 190. <laughs> As we put along at 18 miles an hour, but God, it sounds like we're doing 10. <laughs> Did those other passenger cars finally stop back there somewhere? Oh yeah, they're way back there. They pretty much stopped right where we cut them off. I guess we could just let the pressure slingshot here a little bit. Bring the bar up. Just get the pressure and then we'll, we'll get the, the tractive effort and then do the thing. Well, now we're not making any smoke. I guess it's because we don't really have any draft, but... And we've barely got any atomizer. There we go. Get a little bit more. And uh, now, now, now that we've almost blown the locomotive up, now we go charge! Ooh, we're going slow enough that we were able to get wheel slip. Now what's our back pressure looking like? Looking like a lot. Yeah, that would do it. Train derailment due to an AI collision. Uh-oh. Our hubris has gotten us just as we were starting to get back into it. Oh, Lord. Okay, well, we asked for that. I had some amount of an idea of what was going on. That was a little silly. If you guys think I should give this one another shot, or if I should move on to the uh, the 1800s old stuff that Smokebox has put together, we'll do that operator error invalid consist. <laughs> yeah, hmm, why did that happen? <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you click the like button if you did. Uh, click the subscribe button. Click the bell if you want to know when things happen on the channel as well. Thank you to all of the ESD brakemen that support the channel. If you'd like to become a brakeman, support the channel, get some sweet live stream perks, extra emojis, and a little bit more content from me, make sure you check that out on the community page. Click the little join button down below. So, thanks so much for watching, everyone.